what I mean You too, team, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a made it Team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Saint Graven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, which is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, based off of any NFL team, and we answer it in a video just like this. Now, if you want to be part of NFL Questions from Subs, send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it in a DM directly on Patreon. I love everybody. I appreciate everybody. On this episode, we have a very, very special guest. Without further ado. Let's introduce. Right, so YouTube team, keep it clean. Uh, on this episode of NFL questions from subscribers, we got another special guest. It's Jermaine, the Couch Rider Raven. Uh, and just to get straight into it, why? Why? Why did you start doing YouTube? Why did you start uh, discussing the Ravens? On oh, it's it's got to go way back. We got to take this back to let's say 2010. You know, okay. I'm military. Here I am sitting at work next to the water cooler, and my buddy says, "Hey man." You you know these stats, like for real, you know these stats. We're talking about, you know, yards per carry when it comes to running backs and all this stuff. And he's just like, you should do this for real. And I'm like, what are you talking about, man? He's like, no, I, I mean, you should do this. I'm like, all right, sure. So I started up a website, which turned into a company, which was the Couch Rider Report. And so I started around the same time you started YouTube, but I started on a website of Couch Rider Report. And I was putting my videos on private because I wanted people to come to the link that was on the articles. Mm -hmm. But I didn't recognize how powerful YouTube is as far as a voice. People want to see things right in front of them. Mm -hmm. And so I just decided to just uh, see what would happen if I moved everything from Couch Rider Report over to YouTube and start building that way. Because there's some people just they don't like articles as much as they like the, the visual piece of it. And so I've yeah. just been having a great time with it. I've been a Baltimore Ravens fan since 1999 when Michael Irvin got hurt. He was one of my favorite players <laughs> and once he got hurt uh my family's all from maryland they came down to louisiana had me became cowboys and saints fans might have got divorced because of it i don't know i mean <laughs> but when they asked me to choose and my uncle put a hat on me and i became a Baltimore <laughs> ravens fan uh from pretty much that point on from 1999 on and have not looked back it's a team for me it's a team for you we absolutely just love talking ravens Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, it just, and then of course, my whole family, our mantra is faith, family, and football. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and that's that's a big piece of our, our home right there. Of course, we have it in that order as far as the faith is concerned. Families, you know, right after that, you see that with our you know, ability to get together or not. It's based off of, you know, we have similar values as far as the family piece. Mm -hmm. And then football is the next big thing. I love my Ravens. I eat, sleep, and breathe some Ravens. And sometimes I'm a little bit too addicted. I'm just, I'm like, where's my next Raven shot, you know? <laughs> but, yeah, so I, I started, I guess, doing the YouTube back in uh, officially March, mm -hmm. like the end of March time frame, and then got a little bit uh, consistent with it, started doing it, like, you know, at least twice a week or once a week. As long as I was mm -hmm. there with that weekly time frame, I was happy with it. And right. it just started to grow. I was just like, hey, let's go. You know, we had 400 subscribers. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so, so what's been your favorite part about it? Oh, just just the interaction, being able to just talk with Ravens about football and just, you know, just talking it up and being able to shoot a video out here and there and working mm -hmm. with the green screen. I, I love oh, yeah, messing yeah, around yeah. with green screen, the different backgrounds, <laughs> the technology piece. And it's just just having so much fun with it, you know, just being inspired mm -hmm. out of nowhere for post. I'm like, oh, they talking about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This, yeah. Is, you know, this is where it's going to happen. And then, our, of course, our mantra is the. Uh, original sports perspective from our couch to yours and that's that's the couch rider reports mantra it's been like that since 2014 we're gonna keep it rocking now how, how did you come up with that name couch rider report what what does it mean what's the uh what, what is it about exactly yeah so it was just me uh i was thinking a lot like something like bleacher report at the time mm -hmm. i was sitting actually on my couch so <laughs> when i but I was always writing my articles. I was doing uh, just simple blogging. And of course, I didn't want something that was just Jermaine Lockett. You know, I had a, a couple mm -hmm. of people who put their brand on, they put the brand on, on blast, but it's just their name. And I wanted it to be a team of something, of, of something that somebody believed in, you know? If I was to build an empire, 
I wouldn't call it the Jermaine Lockett Empire because I want everybody to have a piece of that. So if, as people continue to jump on, and how and I had writers working uh, with the Couch Writer Report at the time. It was just something I wanted them to believe in as well, not just a Jermaine Lockett thing, more of a team thing. You're like, like team keep you clean, you know, it's like the Couch Writer Report, the home of original sports perspective. And because we were always talking original stuff, because I think the biggest piece of it was when Johnny Manziel uh, was the talk of the town <laughs> and, and or, or Farb Watch or Ocho Cinco was always on ESPN. Mm. And we couldn't get anything else. You couldn't hear anything about any other team, any right. other low name player, because like it was just constantly flooding the, the, the airwaves, whatever like that, especially during the yeah. off season. They'd yeah. find one topic and that's all they stick to. And I was mm -hmm. like, man, screw it. I'm going with original sports perspective from our cash to yours. Okay. I like that, man. All right. So, and where can they find you at? Your YouTube channel, Twitter, anything you need to let the people know about? Yes, sir. Look, y'all want to find me? I would make my day. I would just, I would just be so complete if you find me on Couch Rider Raven. It's C O U C H. R I D E R Raven. So it's Couch Space Rave uh, Rider Space Raven, and that's on uh, that's on YouTube, and then on Twitter, I believe it's Alfie J L or Couch Rider Raven, or you can find me under Jermaine Lockett. Same thing with Instagram. I spend most of my time on Facebook because I'm a little older, but <laughs> I also spend time on Twitter uh, talking to the guys on the uh, the was it Let the Black Man Talk. <laughs> They go in on there, man. I'm like, wow. Okay, they going in all day. I was like, I got to mute these guys just for a little bit because they they talk about uh, great stuff. And I'm like, I'm in front of my commander, like, yes, sir. And I'm looking at the phone, like, oh my gosh, like, this is good. This is good. <laughs> all right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into this episode of NFL questions from subscribers. First question came from my guy Martin. He said, "Is it concerning to you at all that unlike the rest of the Ravens draft?" We haven't heard anything about Adafi away in the offseason. I saw an article today about Dalen Hayes being a steal. I know it's just training camp and all, but maybe he's a different player on Sundays. Well, um, actually, you you answered your own question, even though it was sort of, uh, I don't want to say wrong, but because you said you, you know it's just training camp and all that, but maybe he's a different player on Sundays. They haven't even hit training camp. Yeah, just uh, they, they're hitting training camp real soon. Yeah. So uh, with, with not hearing about Adafi away, it's, it's not a big deal. I, I, I wouldn't overthink it or anything like that. Yeah, but what about you? <laughs> I'm thinking, hey, the pads ain't on yet. They ain't on yet. <laughs> on yet. Right. You folks over here chilling at the house right now. Maybe maybe they working together on their craft. I don't know. But we don't know anything because it's the dead zone right now. Like I said, I said on my channel, make sure you check on your Ravens friends because they're not okay right now. You caught me caught watching <laughs> Titanic the other day. I'm telling you, these folks at the house, they're enjoying themselves, they're enjoying their families. This is why you ain't hearing about them. Just because they ain't active on Instagram doing anything, right. don't get all crazy mm -hmm. behind it. Once mm -hmm. they get them pads on, they get the click clacking, you're going to see the the aggressiveness of these players, especially when it comes to the right tackle position. And be the way that he's got to prove something, and if Adafi's on that side, you're going to see a, a heated camp battle between those two. Because they're gonna be trying to protect and get to LJ. You know what I mean? Next question came from my boy Gareth. He said, uh, "It's great that kids can now make money off of their names in college, uh, and it would be great if you could do a breakdown on it." Have a great day. Hope you and your family are having a great summer. Um, so it's pretty simple. Uh, it's something that should have happened a long time ago because these colleges, they make millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars off of the the players, uh, the athletes, and whatnot, and the teams. Um, but the players, they can make money. They can monetize their their name, their likeness. What was the other thing they can monetize? You remember? Oh, the attributes. So they, their, their speed, their athleticism, I mean, agility, all of those things, you know, to tie into the player. I mean, there was a reason why uh, the NCAA was taking the names off uh, when they were doing it. It was the NCAA uh, – I can't remember what it was called. The NCAA football game, the, the college mm -hmm. football, by eSports, whatever – but they were taking those names off because they didn't want to pay them. But then they were getting sued because the likeness was being used as far as the, the all of the attributes, speed, height, weight, you know, all right. of the, the agility, all of that. That's what they're making the money. I was just talking to my guy the other day. I said, hey, look, you know, yes, these guys deserve to get they deserve to get played. Because when you look at it, if the colleges were having to do, let's say, a commercial or a preview to a game, if they just put the jerseys up there consistently all the time say hey this is going to be what the game is about and just showed the jerseys 
they wouldn't make the money. It's about the players. They're using their likeness. They're using their talents, their skills, their Heisman play and play making ability, all of that to make sure that they get money for these universities. Now, in turn, this is what I would, if I was to do it and pay these players, I would do it a certain way. I would make sure, of course, you still want to be able to have them reach for the stars and go for the NFL. But at the same time, I say you can earn up to $200,000 a year, and that's it. That's your cap. $200,000 a year. Once you reach that, you can't make any more money on endorsements and stuff. And just to keep you hungry and make sure that you know our universities still get paid, we pull your scholarship. You pay it with that money. You're probably making about $50,000, 50, whatever. You went from nothing to making 50000 and having your, your college paid for. Pretty solid. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying there. Yeah. Pay the room and board. I say pay the room and board, but mm. at the same time, they get 50000 but they still have to pay their college. And because mm. let's just say, like, let's say their college probably costs like $110,000 or whatever. So they're getting, they're getting paid. I mean, you know, $200,000, they still get a doctor's salary just for showing up and playing ball. But it That's helps them learn responsibility, learn that, okay, I still need to strive for that extra, that good pay for that NFL. It doesn't keep them fat and happy and just be like, all right, I'll go ahead and go for that legal degree, stay eight years <laughs> in college, you know? <laughs> Gets them to that I'm, next level. Okay, I like that, man. I, 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 that'd be interesting. I, I never thought about that before, like, at all. Like, having them pay for their own uh, scholarships and stuff. With the money, the only the only thing that I've been thinking about, oh yeah, they finally getting paid, uh, cause they they be put they put their bodies out there like that, they put their bodies on the line for the colleges, and, and I mean, you know, enough of them are getting paid under the table and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely, but, a, lot, so, a lot of dirty stuff going on. Yeah, of course they but, got penalized for that, you know, when they got caught and it was shamed upon, but now put it on the front scene, say, hey, we want you to go ahead and go after this money. You know, but once you get to that two hundred thousand, the rest, you know, and that, and that would the rest would have to roll back into the university hmm. uh, to help out with the other programs, the other students. Because you know, I mean, you're asking uh, a college university to take a major hit in the amount of funds that they're making. Ultimately, I'm not saying hmm. that it's right. I'm just saying they're going to sit there and look at it like, hey, you know, we are going to take a major financial hit here by paying even our punters, you know, two hundred thousand dollars a year. So after they hit that cap, pull that money back into the, you know, pull some of that money back into the university. It'll help the, all the other programs out and some of the education, or, uh, edu educational piece will not be hurt. Now, I, I'm not sure if there is or not, but do you know if there's a uh, roster limit on colleges, like on college teams? I am not sure. That's why I, I stick to like NFL football, I'll be honest. Because like, obviously with NFL, they had the 53 man roster. So. Yeah. And not everybody's making top dollar and whatnot. Um, so I wonder, like, with college, uh, if they would set, like, a cap uh, for how much they could pay the athletes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And um, especially depending on, like, how many athletes are on the team, how many players are on the team. Yeah. And that's, yes. Yeah, yeah, you got to cool. wonder, like, is it going to be spread out evenly? Because, like I right. said, a center is probably not going to make as much as a skill position player. They're not going to get those endorsements. Weez is not calling up for a center. <laughs> They're not calling yeah. for that guy to, to be their, their one that they endorse. But that one player is going to be bringing in money into the university. Is there going to be like a, a college players association equivalent to like the NFL Players Association that divvies out the checks to say, okay, look, I know you was playing right guard. And you didn't make as much money or brought in much money as this running back or this wide receiver or this corner. But we want you to, here's a little, little bit of cheese on your taco, as Bart say, uh, to encourage them to continue to, to play for that university. Next question came from Nova. He said, hey, Engraven, how's it going? Uh, the name's Nova, and I've been watching for over a year now. And first off, uh, keep up the great and consistent work. I appreciate it. I uh, hope all is well with the fam. And I have two questions. Looking at the team we have now, we seem to have improved from last year, but I'm looking less at the expectations for this year and more of what can we do to avoid the mishaps of last year. Based on that question, last year our offense was led by our run game, mainly Lamar Jackson, J.K. Dobbins, and Gus Edwards. Hollywood and Andrews also ate in the pass game. With the recent changes in our offense, uh, we're expecting more passing. So who is the person who is going to fall back Stats wise, I'll let you take this one. 
Well, I mean, you got to look at it. There's a lot of mouths that's got to, they got to be fed right now. Mm -hmm. And as far as stat wise, running, as far as running the ball, Lamar may take a dip in stats because they got him all these weapons. JK's wanting to make that next step to be that thousand yard rusher. You got Rashad Bateman there. You got Sammy Watkins. And guess what? You have, you know, Keith Williams that is saying, hey, look, these, these, uh, these routes, these drills are the routes. The routes are the plays. This is going to happen. It's going to be an encouragement and an infusion into the offense to, to make it develop, to make it something more than it is now. And I'm not saying that this offense right now is that it's, it's great for the regular season as far as you know, coming at them with a different approach uh, than, than the other teams are preparing for. But when it comes to playoff time, they have that extra week sometimes to prepare in that division round for the Baltimore Ravens rushing attack. They can't come basic with it. And because of that, it's going to cause the Ravens to have to change their approach. So the passing game is going to improve. And I say Lamar's running rushing yards are going to take a dip. And honestly, I think uh, there might be an even spread of passes or receptions uh, passed out amongst the wide receivers. So Hollywood might take a dip in numbers. I know people were expecting like thousand yard wide receiver here, thousand yard wide wide receiver there. But honestly, you can't feed everybody. You know, ask Aaron Rodgers. You can't feed everybody on the team. He has no oil to him when he's tossing around. Sure, Devontae's getting his in, but those other guys recognize that everybody's going to get fed. We just got to wait for opportunity and make the best of it. Good points. And his next question is, while we have made adjustments to avoid the mistakes of last year, do you think we have done enough to improve on our weaker aspects of the team? While I expect the passing to improve, I'm just hoping the offensive line makes a step forward. Uh, we can retain depth and mainly stop so many pre-snap penalties. Pass rush is also a weakness, and I don't know if we address that completely. At this moment, we haven't signed anybody new, and this is being recorded on July 2nd. Mm. Keep that in mind. Anyway, uh, thanks for the responses, and as usual, keep up uh, what you do. So uh, just to go piece by piece, he said, while I expect the passing game to improve, I'm just hoping the offensive line uh, takes a step forward. And we can retain depth and mainly stop so many pre-snap penalties. Uh, with the pre-snap penalties, that that was huge uh, last year. I mean, it's always huge uh, when your offense shoots itself in the foot. And, and that's Orlando Brown a lot, though, wasn't it? It, it was him too, but yeah, it was. He got <laughs> <laughs> But um, that that's that's the worst because it's bad enough. Like if you have a play and you don't execute it right, or it's a bad play, whatever it might be. But it's it's even worse if before you even get a chance to execute the play, if you you jump in early, or you 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 got like they they didn't really have many holding calls like that. But the pre snap, the illegal motion, uh, just uh, it it was just a mess last year, and um, it just it it kills momentum. Uh, it, it kills drives. It, it takes away yards, uh, and it's just th they got to get that fixed, man. And, and hopefully, 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 we can credit that to not the, to them not having an off season from last year. Hopefully, I feel like that's not really an excuse, but at the same time, hopefully, with this them having a full off season this year and training camp and the whole nine, that it'll be just a much smoother process when they put that product on the field. I think it, when it comes to practice and play, hey, you know, unless your name, unless your name is Boykin, you play how you practice, <laughs> to be honest. It translates to the field. When it comes to repetition, when you're constantly having those those reps, those mental reps and the physical reps, mm -hmm. the mistakes, they go down. I was just going over a speech with one of my troops the other day, and the more she practiced, the better she got with the speech. And it was it was true. She sat there and she lit it up. She actually got three coins from the commanders and everything like that. But the same thing when it comes to Ravens football. If yeah. you get the practice in and the more repetitions you get, the less of the penalties, the less mistakes are going to get made. And as long as they keep Pat McCarry out of the center position, I am completely satisfied with okay. the offensive line. I know I had to fire a little shot out there. But, look, I mean, it is what it is. There were a couple of people I was not impressed with when it oh. came to the offensive line, and that was one of them. And I'm kind of glad that they made the moves that they made in order to, hey, beef up this offensive line. I don't really have – I have full confidence that this offensive line is going to be able to take it – I mean, just be able to handle business because you have competition going.
going on. And even though, you know, I had a problem with Makari as center, I think he can do things at guard uh, that pretty much are pretty solid. I think there's a reason that the Ravens kept him around after that Bills loss because they, hey, they believe in his talents at other positions. And I think you have a lot of talent at the offensive line position. So I'm just – I'm excited to see what they can do. It's pass rush. They just got to – we got to have faith. Bowser, <laughs> he, he needs his opportunity. You know, he needs his opportunity to sign. So does Ferguson. There's a reason Baltimore picked him up and he beat Sugg's record in college as far as sacks. The guy has a, a good bit of talent. He just needs the opportunity. And if we go get a Justin Houston to bury on top of this guy and push these these younger guys down the depth chart again, they're not going to get their opportunity to, uh, to shine. Next thing you know, what happens? They go to another team who actually does give them the opportunity to shine, and then they turn into Zadarius Smith because they didn't get an opportunity in Baltimore to be fed. So with that being said, I mean, it sounds like you kind of answered the question already, but I got to ask just for clarity. Would you rather the Ravens leave the pass rush as it is right now, or would you rather them sign Justin Houston? I'd rather keep it as is. I have full faith in Wink to be able to get pressure. He said it himself. He does not. He, he is not crazy about signing big name pass rushers, and he would prefer to uh, just blitz everything, send the, whole, send the whole house to get yeah, everybody yeah. home. And I, I feel like a way is athletic and productive and disruptive enough to get back there and cause problems. Honestly, I expect him to have six sacks this season, at least six, because of the amount of pressure that Wink is going to apply, and it's not going to be just from him. You see Queen blitzing right up the middle mm -hmm. a majority of the time. He's getting corners to blitz. I mean, that, that Bengals game, when every single one of the, the def defensive backs had a sack, that was just nasty, the way he sends all this pressure. You know, People are going to get home. And Baltimore, you ain't got no money. We ain't got no money. <laughs> and I know, you know, I know you said the cap is cap, but EDC's thinking, you know, not just this year. He's thinking building for the future with it when it comes to the Ravens and building responsibly and, you know, not doing – uh, deals that pretty much end up being a lot of dead money because of the fact we kept rolling things back to pay these contracts. So he's also thinking about paying Lamar. He's thinking about paying Andrews, paying all these different players. To bring in Houston, it just it hurts the growth of Owe, and it, it absolutely cuts you know Ferguson. It probably, he probably ended up gone before the season starts if, if they bring in Houston. It doesn't give Bowser his opportunity to show what he can do. And I think Bowser has the tendency to, to be great this year if he's given that opportunity on the other side. Yeah, he's definitely going to get – this is going to be the most opportunity that he's ever had because uh, with Tyus Bowser, he's just never been out there consistently like that. Uh, mm -hmm. He's been more of a situational, rotational type of player. Uh, but now with the Ravens, they decided to keep him, and which was no surprise, especially with Yannick and Gakwe. We knew he was going to make a lot of money, and even Matt Judon was getting ready to make a lot of money too. Absolutely. Uh, with Tyus Bowser, that, that was the expected guy that they were going to keep. Um, and they got Rivers guy. What do you think about him? You, you, uh, Chauncey Rivers? Yeah, yeah. I, I wish I, I hope we get to see him a little bit. I, that's what this is why I'm so excited this year for the preseason because we that's ain't had right. no preseason last year and yeah. they didn't have a preseason last year. But with us having preseason, like we, we, we talk so much about all these different positions on the roster and whatnot, uh, and the Ravens' depth or some at some positions their lack of depth. Mm -hmm. But now with preseason. You know the starters they they won't even probably sniff the preseason too much especially because it's only three games yeah. but now we'll get to see all these backups we'll get yeah. to see all these guys who we've been wondering about oh how does this guy look how does that guy look and da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. so um as far as chauncey rivers i'm excited to see him in preseason i'm excited to see adafe away um i'm excited to see uh ardarius washington yeah i'm uh, also excited to see uh tony Pauljan too man. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm i'm just I'm, I'm excited to just see the the depth guys man of course excited to see the starters too but i'm mm -hmm. excited to see the depth because the thing about depth you you got to have quality depth uh at as much as you possibly can you yeah. you obviously can't have so much quality depth at every single position all over the roster it'll be nice but mm -hmm. um that's what the salary cap is for that's what the roster is for the way it's constructed and whatnot but um i just i i, I want to see the guys who are going to be the backups too because, as you know, football, any given Sunday, and on any given Sunday, it could be any given injury to any 17 given 17 games. 17 games? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 17 games, that too. That extra yeah. game? Look, I'm even mm -hmm. curious to see what Huntley and McSorley do in this competition with each other. Because oh. if they – if for some reason I am not – I'm knocking all over the wood. I mean, beating the wood down right now. But I – 
really want to see, hey, if they if they can be that backup that we need them to be. And this preseason helps both of them to mature as players and, and it gets a good bit of competition. We'll see who the number two is going to be. But we, we, we got to know. Maybe they just decide out of nowhere midseason, even after a bye, hey, let's just rest Lamar. Let's just rest the legs or something like that. Let's put Tyler Huntley out there. That shows me confidence if they, they decide to do something like that. But he can put that resume during the preseason to make that happen. Uh -huh. And I mean, just to end it on this note, I, I think Tyler Huntley wins the backup quarterback. Sure.